Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here in San Jose in California and sunny it is. And I'm talking with Preston Pate, who is CTO Ensemble at Adva Optical Networking. Preston, good. good to see you again. You too. We've had a few conversations down the years about various technologies and, and, and vendors and products and so on. I'd like to begin by asking you this. What do you think vendors have to do to convince CSPs that the transformation journey they are almost perforce being made to undertake is worth the pain? That's pretty straightforward. And the answer is stop talking and show them. Show them that it is not only possible, but straightforward to deploy a multi-vendor VNF solution. Show them the performance that meets their requirements. Show them a business case that works. And finally, show them that you have answers for the deployment questions they have in terms of scale and support. When you move from talking to showing, the conversation changes. Okay. I would say the answer to that, well, you would say that, wouldn't you, coming from where you're coming from? <laughs> but I want, you to, I want you to add some meat to the bones of that, because what is it then that you can do in, ways, in this sort of proof of the way things can work that others can't? It's not a matter of what others can't, it's what they won't. There's a lot of people that are talking about multi-vendor solutions. Some of those are only talking about it. From a very long time ago, we've embraced the notion that in order to effectively deploy NFE, we have to work in an ecosystem. We've had a large set of partners that we've been working with, both on the software side as well as with the COT servers. We have been working with a number of operators and most importantly, we've been able to work together, suppliers and operator, to create a solution that works. So a big part of it is attitude. Now there's also technology pieces and some inventing along the way and hair pulling, which uh, some <laughs> of us can't really afford. But at the end of the day, a lot of it is about what people are willing to do to make these solutions work. And that goes for the operators too. There are some that are now that are still looking for all the reasons that can't be done as opposed to finding a way to do it. Interesting and different answer. Thanks for that. I always try to be different. You do. Well, let's move on. Um, another thing, of course, we, you've just been doing it. We do it all the time. We talk in acronyms. We talk in, in, in initials. The industry, telecommunications industry, has traditionally been like that. There's always a buzz phrase of the month, the, the year, whatever it may be. One that's top of the pile at the moment is cloud native. What does that mean, specifically in terms of CSPs and their vendors? Well, like most buzz phrases, it means whatever the speaker wants it to mean. <laughs> and I've, I've had that same question. I was at a NIA event at the end of last year, and I heard one of the operators that was there use the phrase. So I went up and asked her, what does cloud native mean to you? And she gave a pretty good answer. She said the first thing was that it, the VNFs or the software had to be able to run in public cloud infrastructure, things like AWS and Azure, yep. or that it was able to run on open white box servers as opposed to closed solutions. And then finally, another thing that had been a real problem for them was ease of onboarding. It was taking them months and months to do onboarding. So for, for that particular uh, operator, those were the, the key aspects. Now, in talking to other ones, some other, one, some other aspects that I've heard are things like the design to run in cloud infrastructure, things like scalability using the components of OpenStack and those sorts of things. So if you look at what all those attributes have in common, they are all related to cloud solutions. And so perhaps we should not talk about cloud native, but things like cloud-centric or cloudified, reflecting the heritage and the attributes that, that should be reflected. Good answer to that, and different, Preston, so thank you for that. Let's carry on. Also at the top of the sort of pile of buzzwords is network automation and zero touch. What are they, and is it a realistic end goal for CSP networks? Absolutely. An operator today can start with an unconfigured appliance, a router, a NID, an SD-WAN endpoint. They can take that unconfigured appliance, ship it to an end user, turn it up without somebody on site, and activate services. The question is, how can they do that same sort of operation on software running on a white box server? That situation is further complicated by the fact that now the VNF that needs to be spun up is part of the connectivity. How do you 
solve that chicken and egg problem. Sure. How do you do the zero touch configuration in a standards based vendor neutral way? And finally, how do you do that if there's no wireline connectivity? Those are hard problems, mm -hmm. but they're solvable. We've been working with innovative operators to solve those. So absolutely, it's a reasonable expectation, and I think it's one that the innovative operators and innovative suppliers can create solutions that, that solve. Are you actually seeing this happen? You've been, you've been to places, and you've been to visit people, and this, they're actually doing this? Absolutely. And if you watch, you'll see some announcements coming out very soon with some proof points. Okay. As usual, President Pate, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Martin.